we'd like to welcome y'all here. My name's Mike Lucas. I'm a producer from Fleckley County. I also serve as chairman of the Georgia Cotton Commission. And uh, the, the members of the Cotton Commission would like to welcome you to the seventh annual Cotton Meeting. Um, as a legislative uh, action, the producer members of the Cotton Commission expanded from five members to seven members last year, in case some of y'all didn't realize that. And I'd like to recognize the uh, producer members that are here today. We're going to, if y'all in here, how about standing up so people can recognize you when uh, I call your name. We have Mr. Wavell Robinson. He's the vice chair from Brooks County. Mr. Wavell in here. I know we still got some outside. Uh, we got Mr. Marvin Ruart from Morgan County. We got uh, Lee Crumbly from Bullock County. We got Matt Coley from Dooley County. We got Stephen Meeks from Wayne County. And also we got a uh, advisory board that consists of Chad Mathis from Early County. We got Mr. Eddie Green from Dooley County. And we got Mr. Gary Bell from Evans County. And um, a side note here, if Mr. Uh, Cross from uh, Dooley County is in here, would he please stand up? He is one of the earliest uh, commission members that we had back in the 70s, 80s. And we're glad to have you here this morning. Oh. Also, we have our ex officios, which is Zippy Duval, the President of the Farm Bureau, and the Commissioner of Agriculture, Mr. Gary Black. Um, today, our speakers will bring information that is timely and focused on challenges facing our industry. We appreciate your attendance and, and support of the Georgia Cotton Commission program. Uh, to begin our program, Mr. Richie Seaton, the Commission Executive Director, will give an update on the Cotton Commission. And if you will, just uh, hold your uh, questions to the end of the speakers and then they'll be gladly to answer. Mr. Richie, would you come on? In case I did, Bart, I think I skipped over you. My, my glasses wasn't on. Bart uh, Davis from Worth County. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'd like to certainly add uh, my welcome to uh, Chairman Lucas's and thank you all for attending uh, our seventh annual meeting. Uh, we've got an excellent crowd today. Uh, uh, everything's gone real well except one of our speakers, Mark Masur from Cotton Incorporated, uh, tried to get here yesterday but snow in New York prevented him from being with us and we couldn't do it, uh, we tried to do it by Skype or something like that and, and, it, and it just wouldn't work but hopefully uh, uh, Congressman Austin Scott's going to uh, be with us about lunchtime today and, and bring us some remarks. Hopefully he'll have some uh, updated news for us from Washington. Um, we can't have a good meeting, good food facility without our sponsors and uh, you see the sponsors we have, we really appreciate them and hopefully y'all will take time and, and visit with the uh, folks at their displays out there or ones just mingling in the crowd. But uh, if y'all join me in giving them a great big hand, we really appreciate what they do for us. Georgia Cotton Commission's uh, mission since 1965 has been to help growers produce a high yielding, high quality, profitable crop and secure the future of Georgia's cotton industry through research, promotion, and education. Uh, next year, in 2015, we'll be celebrating or marking the 50th anniversary of the commission coming into existence. And uh, uh, there are many people, like Mr. Cross, previous members of the commission, uh, Execution shows, whatever, uh, faculty, staff from the university, 
our cotton organizations that have helped make cotton great, not only in, in our state, but in this country. And I uh, would like to uh, thank you all for the strong vote of support that uh, y'all gave us in our last uh, reaffirmation referendum last March. <clears throat> we have by law to vote on uh, our commission's continuance every three years, and it's done by a producer vote by mail. This past March, we got the most ballots we've ever had returned, and we also got the highest uh, level of approval of 93%. So uh, we appreciate that vote of confidence uh, that, that y'all have given us and what we do on y'all's behalf with y'all's financial support. And I can assure you, the staff and the board of the commission uh, actually will continue to try to do an even better job of, of, uh, of being good stewards of your funds. Um, we collect a dollar a bale. Here's a, a nice clear example of how the money spent varies a little bit from year to year, particularly in the area of organizational support and research. Uh, uh, 62, almost 63 uh, percent is based on organizational support. Uh, we pay dues to the National Cotton Council and Southern Cotton Growers. Uh, council represents all seven segments of our industry and rep particularly represents us in, uh, in legislative and regulatory uh, manners. We do a lot of other things with them, which I'll touch on as we go through. Uh, research, uh, this past year's budget uh, allocation totaled up to be a little bit over 21%. Uh, we uh, are fortunate that we receive uh, money from state, from the Cotton Incorporated State Support Program, which allows us to continue making a, a strong investment in research and extension activities here to uh, hopefully uh, be, make you a more profitable, more efficient cotton producer. Um, the smallest budget category we have is uh, promotion. Uh, ever since I started with the commission, uh, the board's direction to me was is uh, we pay a, an assessment to the commission. We also pay the uh, cotton research and promotion uh, um, checkoff, and that supports the cotton board and cotton incorporated. And our marching orders is not or are or not to uh, spend dollars coming out of the same pocket along the same avenue. So what we do is we focus our uh, promotional efforts on local, particularly FFA, 4-H, and those type things because we feel if we get our young folks in agriculture uh, uh, educated about cotton's benefits, whether they be economic, comfort, or uh, historic, then they will hopefully remember us favorably for, uh, for the remainder of their lives when they have families and have to start buying clothing and, uh, and, and home goods. Uh, the 11.12%, that's what it costs uh, for us to do business. That's everything from our rent to travel expenses, those type things. So uh, we do make sure that uh, we always have a little bit of a cushion for uh, rainy days. And uh, thankfully, we had way too many rainy days this year, but we were blessed with a good crop two years in a row in, in, in 11 and 12. Uh, we spend on the average about five, six hundred thousand dollars a year in research and uh, uh, we take it very seriously. In December of every year we send out our call for proposals and uh, these are some of the areas that we uh, focus on. Obviously that's a changing type thing but these are some of the high points that, that uh, we always uh, have to focus and put some investment in. Uh, we do have an excellent relationship with Dean Angle and his staff at the uh, College of Environment, Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, and uh, we've always been able to work with them, uh, whether it be supporting research or helping them fund positions or working with the, uh, them and the General Assembly to, to actually get dollars in support of their programs, and uh, much of the success that, that we have uh, comes from our strong research program. Uh, here's a couple of things. We, the commission, when we do our call for proposals, pardon me, move my hand back away from that key, uh, is we have them ranked. We have a research advisory committee. We also uh, have the individual staff scientists at uh, Cotton Incorporated 
um, review them to make sure that they're number one addressing the needs here that is good science we also ensure by them reviewing it that we're in line with the research activities uh, of of the cotton industry belt wide uh, you sometimes can get a lot more mileage out of the dollars you spend if you work cooperatively together uh, our commission and research advisory group uh, we have a small field day at some point during the summer where we can actually visit with the guys out in the uh, in the plots and that's a that's a really good way i've seen some great ideas from research for research come from farmers and scientists standing out in that field talking uh, we also join with peanut folks uh, in September of every year to have a cotton and peanut field day and uh, this is a well organized event and many of you do grow cotton and peanuts and uh, we would like we hope it's a good day for you to come and get a few highlights of, of what your check off dollars are doing on your behalf. <laughs> um, we have a number of cotton organizations and uh, we as I said pay dues uh, our policy and regulatory organizations, the National Cotton Council, Southern Cotton Growers, uh, the uh, actual collector of your research and promotion assessment is the Cotton Board, and they oversee and uh, uh, contract with Cotton Incorporated to do the actual research program. And uh, you can see some of these, I won't take time to read through them, but you know, we, we have constant issues and uh, thankfully these organizations do a good job for us and uh, uh, most importantly is they're responsive and, uh, and address the needs as, as of our industry as they come up. And of course we have representation uh, uh, on there this year. Uh, um, uh, Chuck Coley, former chairman of the board of the National Cotton Council is with us today. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there are any other folks that should be recognized. If, if I miss you, I'm sorry. Uh, but moving along, uh, here are a couple of things that we do above and beyond the policy arena is uh, the producer information tour is an event that the National Cotton Council put on. And uh, what they do is identify farmers from different regions and bring them. For example, this year we had the Mid-South folks come over and then Georgia or the Southeast took a group over there in June, July. Uh, the Multi Commodity Exchange Education Program is a fairly new program and uh, it's uh, financed uh, through the, I believe, the Cotton Foundation. And uh, what the purpose of this program is, is in the last few years, and it's not an, anything new, is Agriculture in the Midwest is very, very different from what it is in the Southeast and in the Cotton Belt. And what we try to do is one year, a group from the Cotton Belt will go up to the, uh, to the Midwest and visit farms, see how they do things. And then um, we will then take a group from the Midwest and bring them down here. This is this, is this year's group up at the uh, uh, the bottom photo is at the Macon USDA class and office. They obviously don't have programs where they get every one of their uh, commodities or outputs graded and whatever. And uh, Noel Bell and his staff did a good job of explaining what goes on there and what they do. And uh, uh, it just makes for a good educational experience where even if people th do differently than you do or do different things than you do, if you understand where each is coming from, that makes a lot of discussions that we have on policy even more important. Uh, Cotton Incorporated, uh, here's something, one of the new products that they've developed. Uh, <clears throat> you may have seen it over the last year or so. There's uh, gonna be a house built over uh, behind the Nespal lab. Uh, it's called the Future Farmstead. And basically it's a zero energy house, if you will. And uh, uh, this denim insulation is, is one of the things that uh, we will have. Uh, we'll, we approached Cotton Incorporated and they were good enough to provide uh, the actual insulation in. And there's a picture of a guy uh, actually putting it in. And uh, we did have some uh, uh, from what uh, Craig Queen, who supervises the project over there uh, for the university, he says the farmers love it. I mean, not the farmers, but the uh, construction people actually love it because. They can put it up, works well, 
and they don't get wrapped up in itchy stuff. And uh, we even had some uh, uh, photos of them using it to wrap heating and air conditioning pipes with it. So it's, it's a very versatile and, and good product. And, you know, there are a lot of cotton organizations that are out there, but I use these few examples to, to simply tell you that uh, we all overlay, we don't overlap, and we do our darndest to work together to, uh, to stretch your uh, assessment checkoff dollars as far as we can. Uh, some of the other things we do, uh, we made a change at the Georgia National Fair this year and moved over into the Georgia Grown building from, um, from an outside tin, and uh, it worked out real well for us. Uh, and saw a good bit more people, and uh, down on the bottom, uh, I'm speaking with a lady. She had about a half dozen uh, uh, daycare type students, a little bit older than uh, young, but they were old enough to pick up a kit, take it with you, and and hopefully they'll learn some cotton when they get uh, learn a lot about cotton when they get back to school. Sunbelt Ag Expo is always an important part of what we do, and if you get to see a lot of consumers, we get to see a lot of farmers and uh, a lot of politicians and. Uh, and, and government officials, it's always good to be able to say hello to them when they come by to visit with us. Uh, we also uh, have some research plots through our uh, Extension Cotton Team grants. Here's Dr. Philip Roberts uh, speaking um, uh, to the Expo Field Day this past year. Um, some of the uh, sponsorships that we do in the area of promotion, uh, 4-H Cotton Bowl and Consumer Judging. Uh, it's about the second largest uh, participant contest that 4-H has in number of participants every year. About seven to nine hundred children, or 4-Hers, I should say, participate. The uh, Future Farmers of America Fiber Oil Crop Proficiency um, is a project, and we also exhibit at the uh, Career and Trade Show that they have it as a part of their annual meeting every year. Uh, uh, we join a lot of different uh, agricultural groups and hopefully are focusing on the, the type of employment opportunities that agriculture does hold. Um, if y'all notice our table out in the lobby, we've got an education kit over there on the left-hand side. Uh, uh, we've had it available for a few years now. Um, a couple of years ago, we sent a hundred of these kits to the individual chapters of the Indiana Farm Bureau. Uh, this lady uh, uh, here, uh, excuse me, I can't remember her name, but she's the director of social studies for the Houston County school system. And each school in Houston County has one of these kits in their learning center now. Uh, uh, we took some time and effort and put together a good kit, and we asked them that they put them there and, uh, and share it with, with the other faculty members. Uh, here again, if you put your good information out there, most everyone i found is very, has a very favorable attitude towards farmers. And if we can show them what we're doing, tell them about how economically important it is, how uh, historically significant cotton and other agricultural productions have and are in the state, uh, we feel like we're you know, getting our message across. And uh, some of the ways that we communicate to you other than uh, um, uh, our annual meeting here uh, is the uh, Southeast Farm Press. Uh, we have a newsletter in there that goes out quarterly. Uh, we also work with the Georgia Farm Bureau and Re uh, Farm Bureau. Uh, we're sponsors of their part, one of the sponsors of the radio and television programs, etc. And we also uh, work with the folks at Southeast AgNet to to try to get the latest information on what we're doing and what's going on in the industry out to you and, and make it as easy as possible for it. Uh, we have a good web page. Uh, we are not where we need to be on some of our uh, um, electronic communications. Uh, we're working on Facebook, and uh, you'll probably see a, a fairly a big new look in our uh, um, um, commission website um, in the not too distant future. Um, our address is our offices are at the fairgrounds in Perry. Uh, you see our web address here, and. Uh, if you have questions or comments, let us know. You don't need to call and pat us on the back. What we'd really like to know is, is what your concerns are and what we need to be doing to ramp up our program to address those concerns. Um, so with that, 
Uh, we'll move along to our next speaker. And uh, after we, as I said, Mr. Masura is not going to be able to, to be with us today. And so we do have a bit of a uh, uh, little bit more freedom in our program. So if you got questions for me or any of the other two folks, uh, presenters, you know, just ask them. We might have to, uh, if we have a lot, we might have to put them off until lunchtime, but that'll be okay. Everybody will have plenty of chances to answer your questions or get your questions answered and visit with our speakers. And most importantly, go out there and visit with our sponsors because uh, they're here because they want to see you and tell you about the products they have. And, and thankfully, they want to uh, uh, support the commission. <clears throat> 